This is Peace, the Gypsy, checking in from Costa Rica. Yes, I've been living in Costa Rica for one month now. I wanted to give it a little bit of time before I made a video. That way I could be like really acclimated and give some proper knowledge. So, I know it's been forever. It's been a little over a year. Last time you guys heard from me, I was living in Guatemala. So basically after Guatemala, um, I don't remember when I made that video exactly. Maybe it was like May. So about two months later, I went back to the States. I went back to Atlanta and I was actually in Atlanta for 10 months, which was not planned. I was planning to just be there for like three or four months and then go back abroad. But with the whole COVID situation, that didn't happen. So I decided to do a Q&A Costa Rica video. So I had people respond to my Instagram and my Snapchat. And I have some questions here. So let's get into it. First of all, Costa Rica, um, despite popular beliefs, Costa Rica is not an island. It's actually an isthmus. So it is connected at the northern part with Nicaragua and the southern part with Panama. But you have the Caribbean side and you have the Pacific side. So I chose the Pacific side because I thought it would be a little less touristy. I would have a bit more of an authentic experience. And I just took a shot in the dark. Now where I am, it is still touristy, but it's actually mostly like older American and Canadian retirees that have moved here. And um, that's fine. But you know, you kind of want to have like a similar crowd, similar kind of age group around you. So I'm considering in a month possibly moving, moving south. There's areas like Tamarindo, which is still in the same province that I'm in, but it tends to be a little more younger age group. Um, all of these are beach towns. Like I have a five minute walk to the beach, so it's really, really nice. And then you have the Caribbean side where a lot of the expats, digital nomads are, and um, popular areas are like Puerto Viejo, um, and they have a town called Limon, which is actually like very Caribbean. There's Jamaicans there, they speak Patois, like it is legit. So I have to go over there because you guys know I'm Jamaican. So let's get into these questions. The first question I had, which is probably the most important question right now is, what is the current COVID situation in Costa Rica? So uh, we are on a spike right now in cases, which is mostly due to the fact that a lot of tourists are coming here because Costa Rica is open, you don't need a COVID test to get in, um, they're not requiring like vaccinations, so it's just really easy, they're very lax about their uh, protocols. So a lot of the hospitals here are um, over capacity and um, very similar to the states where the medical professionals are overwhelmed. Um, needless to say, there are masks, <clears throat> excuse me, masks are required indoors, but being that I'm in a beach town, most of the restaurants are outdoors. So they just do kind of like social distancing, um, very similar to the States. So I feel safe. You do need a COVID test to return back to the States. So keep that in mind. So they recently did implement driving restrictions. So they're doing it based on the license plate numbers. So if your last number of your license plate is an even number, there are certain days, the alternate days that you can drive. If your last number is an odd number, then you drive the opposite days of the even number license plate, which I thought was really interesting. Now, there are exemptions, obviously, like tourists, if you're coming in from the airport and you have like a shuttle or private van or something taking you to your hotel or Airbnb, um, they are exempt from that sort of thing because obviously tourism drives everything, so yeah. So you do need, the one thing you do need to enter Costa Rica now is travel insurance, and the travel insurance must cover COVID-related expenses in the event that you 
get COVID while you're in route or while you're in Costa Rica, you're completely covered. Um, now, I've heard different things about like the cost. Obviously, a lot of people that come here are only here for like 30 days or um, they may do the full 90 days, which is the most that you can do as an American. Um, I've seen in forums that a lot of people keep their insurance from the states, like uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever. That sounds a lot more expensive because they're talking about they're paying like 100, 120 a month or um, for the 90 days they're paying like $160 or something like that. That's what I've seen. Um, since I am out of the country a lot, I decided to go with a company called Hey Mondo. And I really, really like this company because they give you the option of coverage for an entire year. So no matter where I end up, if I leave Costa Rica a couple months from now and go somewhere else, you know, whatever the case, I'm covered for an entire year. And that cost me 200 US dollars. So I feel like that's a better investment. If you know you're gonna be traveling indefinitely for the next year, it's a good investment, which I'm covered for $10 million for COVID expenses. Um, and that includes like lodging, any kind of um, hospital overnight stays, anything like that. If my flight would have gotten canceled, that bags would have been lost, that would have been reimbursed. Accidents, rental, cars, um, death, like just so many random things. I was kind of like, wow, theft, if somebody robs me, like it's just like, wow, it's a whole bunch of stuff. So I would look into that company. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't have any kind of affiliation with them. I just use them and personally recommend Hey Mondo. What is the cost of living like in Costa Rica? So I'll be honest with you. You guys know I've lived in Asia. You guys know that I lived in Guatemala last year. Costa Rica comparatively is expensive. Now it's not United States expensive. You can live on a lot less, but just compared to what I'm used to, it's expensive. If I had to list it, uh, if I had to rank the most expensive countries I've lived in, obviously Spain was the highest because we lose money to the Euro, so that was very costly. Costa Rica's next because it's very touristy, so like obviously a lot of stuff um, where I'm at, they take US dollars and I don't carry US dollars, so I'm just kinda like, can I give you colones? Like that's, that's what I have. I'm like trying to do the whole, you know, be legit. So cost of living, um, someone also asked me to piggyback off that, um, how much money you need to make in order to live comfortably. Now that's a very broad question because it really just depends on what your preferences are. Some people can live off very little and be comfortable, while others may want to have pretty much an American lifestyle while abroad. So it really varies. I'll use myself as an example. I don't go out very often. I may go out to a bar once a week. So I'm not really spending a lot of money outside of like cooking my own meals. Or um, I may order like something to go somewhere. But um, yeah, your, your main expenses are gonna come from if you're trying to go out and like drink a lot, which I mean, when you're on a beach, you're just kinda like, oh, I gotta have a margarita in my hand, so it kinda like, does that to you but um, I would say on the low end if you're a single person with no pets no kids you can live off $1,500 for the month because you can find an apartment once again this just depends on what your preferences are you can find an apartment a one-bedroom apartment for 450 US dollars but there's gonna be some trade-offs with it you may only have fans. Like when I was living in Thailand, I only had fans. I, I didn't have any AC. So there's that. Um, electricity is really high out here. Uh, I think because we use a lot more electricity than Ticos do. So um, our usage is really high, which, which runs on average about 200 US dollars a month. So put that up together if you did choose to live in a less modern apartment you're paying like 650 uh, maybe 700 a month in living expenses um, now if you want to be a little bit more modern like i like modern amenities um, you can find what's 
common is like 650 US dollars for a one bedroom. That includes everything. So that's unlimited Wi-Fi, your electricity usage is included. Um, so 650 US dollars a month if you want like modern amenities. We have a pool out here. Like I said, I'm five minutes walking to the beach. So it's really, really convenient. Um, that's on the higher end. Now, if you wanted to go out a lot, if you wanted to do excursions, if you wanted to just always be out of the house, I would say double that $1,500 and you would probably want to make like $3,000 a month minimum to maintain that sort of lifestyle. But like I said, for me, I don't really go out like that. The stuff that I do, um, I budget it. So I don't really have to work a lot. I don't have to teach online a lot because my costs like aren't that high. So I hope that helps. Last question is how do I intend to stay in Costa Rica for a long time? So to answer that, um, as Americans, we are given 90 days on arrival. So if you want to stay longer than 90 days, you have to do a border run. Now, depending on what part of the country you're on, if you're on the Caribbean side and like um, Puerto Viejo area, um, most people go to Panama and do a border run there. I'm closer to Nicaragua because I'm on the Pacific side north. Um, it's like an hour, hour and 20 minute drive to Nicaragua, so people on this side tend to go there for a border run and they can do a similar thing be out for a couple hours, come back, get their stamp, and they're back in the country for another day, get a, a new 90 days. Sometimes there are extra fees that you may not know about. I read about in some forums that some people weren't expecting to have to pay to leave the, to leave the country or whatever and come back. Um, other than that, the cost that they're aware of, there was an additional cost, that sort of thing. So I tend to want to have long-term visas. So, For example, when I was in Thailand, I was on a student visa, which was good for six months. I didn't have to worry about anything. Once I paid that money, that was it. But I've been kind of looking around and I don't really think they have anything like that. Now, I will say this, they are in the process of creating a digital nomad visa, which I hope they do that while I'm here because that would be a lifesaver. So I think they're in the, in the talks of it being either a six months or a year visa, where if you're a digital, a digital nomad, you just pay the money, you get that visa, and you don't have to leave every 90 days. That would be amazing. So if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I can do another video and answer your questions. And yeah, super excited. Glad you guys are watching. Thank you for tuning in. And stay tuned for next weekend when I'm going to the local towns and I'm going to be documenting everything so you guys are going to see the real Costa Rica. I'm super excited about that. So I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you later. Bye!